Hello everybody, this is Jaren with Collablog coming back for another video. I wanted to do a video today about caller name. Uh, this is something that goes along with caller ID, um, but it's something that as a telecom engineer I get questioned on a lot. Uh, if you're a telecom engineer, I'm sure you get the same questions and maybe you know the answer already and maybe you don't. So if you don't, this will probably help you out a little bit. Um, so basically the FCC regulates uh, caller ID numbers, um, the number that's presented when you call somebody to that uh, receiving receiver. Um, but they don't regulate the name that is presented. The FCC doesn't have any interest, at least uh, as of yet, in regulating how that's done or what name is presented. Um, so each carrier actually defines for themselves how they do this. Some might just pass it on. Most of them uh, are going to actually maintain their own database. Uh, and what they do is typically they'll replace whatever it is that you sent or your carrier sent with whatever they show in their database and, and present that to their end user. So I'm going to show you a little demonstration here, a little diagram uh, to, to kind of explain how this works uh, so that you can better explain it to, to people in your company or if you're you know maybe just looking this up maybe you just information that you would like to know so here on the left hand side we have five 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 one two three four five six seven that's going to be uh, our phone number in this example and on the right hand side we have two twenty two nine eight seven six five four three that's the person we're going to be calling of course we have our two carriers in the middle um, i don't want to get sued so we're going to call them horizon and v mobile um, and then you'll see kind of sticking off of those, the CNAM databases. So whenever you first pick up and you dial 222-987-543 or 6543, uh, you're going to be sending that call if you're uh, in, in a private phone system to your uh, company's internal phone system. Otherwise, you might have a cell phone and you're going to send it directly to the carrier. But in this case, we're going to do here. Now, your phone system has what's called uh, a session border controller that interacts directly with the uh, carrier. I have more on that on my blog if you're interested. There's a whole article on there about uh, it's, a, it's called Introduction to VoIP. Uh, feel free to look to, look into that. Uh, C-O-L-L-A dot blog, that's collab blog, uh, is the website if you wanted to look that up. Now, back to the article or back to our diagram here. Once you sent that call to your internal phone system, it's going to assign a name. Uh, in there and maybe in your internal phone system here um, the name listed for your phone number is John Doe right so that's the name that your phone system is going to assign to this call but it's then going to send the call out assuming this is an external call to somebody outside of your company uh, it's going to route this call out to your uh, local carrier in this case it's it's Horizon uh, now, Horizon's going to do something here called a CNAM dip or a CNAME dip. Um, they're going to dip into their database and they're going to say, hey, what is uh, the name that we have on record for 555-1234567? Typically, what you're going to see here is John Doe's going to get replaced by XYZ Corp, right? So now this is what the phone says the phone call says excuse me says xyz corp rather than john doe but of course unless horizon is the the receiving phone's carrier it's going to then have to send this call out to another carrier in this case v-mobile because that's who 222-987-6543 uses so, uh, v-mobile is going to do kind of the same thing. They're going to do a CNAM dip and say to their database, hey, what's the name for for this call? Now, V-Mobile might look at this call and say, you know, it's XYZ Corp, which is what we want, right? We want their CNAM database to show our name. It doesn't always happen that way, though. They could show up and say, well, this is spam. So now guess what gets presented to the receiving caller? You guessed it. Spam. They're getting spam as the caller name. Now this isn't anything to do with your phone system because your phone system sent John Doe. This doesn't have anything to do with your carrier and their CNAM database because they sent XYZ Core. 
This has to do with the receiving carrier and their database because they, the receiving end, dictate what that caller name is. Now, you might say, well, that's you know simple enough. We can just put in a, a ticket with vMobile. Well, that's where you're wrong because unless you are a customer of vMobile, which you're not, you're a customer of Horizon, unless you're a customer of vMobile, you can't put in that ticket. So what can you do? Well, there's a couple things you can do here. You can submit a ticket with Horizon, your uh, carrier, and ask them to, to pulse out that caller ID name. Now there's a chance that these two databases might be the same thing. Maybe. Unlikely, because if they're showing spam and, and your carrier is showing XYZ Corp, probably not the same thing, right? Um, but, Maybe VMobile shares a database with A, T, and V. <laughs> Again, I don't want to be sued here, right? So maybe they share uh, a database. Uh, and, and you might say uh, unlikely, right? But see, they don't always own this. Carriers don't always own this. This could be a service called Haya. And this could be a service uh, called Newstar. These are two different services that provide caller name to uh, a lot of these larger carriers, Newstar and Haya. Uh, Haya even shows uh, branding. And, and let me put this out here. I'm not paid uh, nor sponsored by Haya nor Newstar. I'm just showing you this uh, as, as a service. But you can see here on the Haya website, you can even add a logo as well as your name. And look, AT&T, Cricket. Both use Haya, right? So without Haya, you just show the number. With Haya, it actually shows the name and potentially a logo and, you know, whatever you want to, to add on there. New Star uh, is another one. Has uh, a lot of uh, big carriers, I think. Uh, let's see here. Well, they're not showing the carriers here. But they, I know Hi or New Star, I believe, is the largest, uh, largest one to my knowledge. New Star is. But these databases are typically going to be higher or new star or a carrier owned uh, database, which is less uh, typical, but um, always possible. So what you can do is you can pay one of these services higher or new star uh, or your company can rather um, to manage that name and potentially logo and whatever else you can brand your call so that whenever you know, VMobile comes in and does their CNAM dip, it'll show XYZ Corp, right? Maybe even, you know, your your logo here. So then instead of, um, let me see, where's my eraser? Instead of spam down here, now we're going to show, you know, a picture in XYZ Corp. You can't see that I'm in the way, but you get the idea. X, Y, Z core. Ah, you can't see it, but that's what, that's what we presented then. So, uh, the point of this video is don't stress yourself out over a uh, potential caller ID name or caller name, uh, because really it's, it's, it's out of your control for the most part, unless you're willing to go out and pay for these uh, CNAM databases and you might that might not even still solve your problem you might pay new star four thousand dollars a month and then guess what the receiving caller their carrier uses Haya <laughs> so it's like what do you do right um, but now you know now you have an answer that you can come back to your customers and say look uh, I've done what I can I've opened a ticket with uh, Horizon um, we've updated our caller name, uh, for all of our numbers. Uh, and at this point we've done all we can do. And this is why, right? And that, that's really what you want to do is you want to be able to go up and if you can't provide a solid solution, you want to at least be able to answer as to why you can't, right? Uh, it's always preferred to, to actually have the solution, but if you can't have the solution. The next best thing is to have an informed answer. So now, you know, um, Check out my blog. The uh, <laughs> It's uh, right up above me here, colla.blog. That's collab log. Um, also, you can find this video on my YouTube. Like and subscribe to my YouTube. 
sign up for my newsletter on my uh, blog uh, or follow me on LinkedIn. This is going to be on LinkedIn as well. Uh, thanks for checking out this video. I hope you found this informative. I really do. Uh, if you have any questions or ideas for other videos that you'd like me to tackle, feel free to let me know. Uh, I'm always looking for ideas, so it's always appreciated. Thanks, everybody.